Thank you. That's great. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this morning that we could all assemble together to praise your holy name and to listen to the scriptures that were read to us, Lord, and also to meditate upon those words. Father, we pray that you will give us wisdom to understand and also the truth to set us free. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Passover is the first of the major seven festivals of the Jewish people. It is called Passover because the angel of the Lord passed over to the Jewish house which were marked with the blood on the lintel and the doorpost. So he passed over and executed judgment on those houses which did not have this. And since the Lord passed over this Jewish house which had the blood, it is called Passover. And the Passover, the very main element in Passover is to take a year old lamb, either from the sheep or from the goat, and then on the first month, the month of Nisan, on the tenth day, keep it in the family, along with the children. And on the fourteenth night, I feel like at the dust, uh, at the dust, you slaughter it and skin it. After that, you roast the whole animal with the head, its legs, and the intestines, everything. You roast it and you eat it with chapati. Okay, that's unleavened bread is chapati, not roti chanai. Roti chanai is leavened bread. Unleavened is chapati. And also you eat with bitter herbs. Okay, the vegetable that is bitter to eat. So you eat along with it with a staff in your hand, with a shoes and then with a band and your abdomen as if you are going for a long journey. All right. And that is how you are supposed to celebrate it and shouldn't leave anything. By morning, if anything left, that should be burnt. And that is the festival which the Jews call Passover. And it was the ordinance given by us. We read for uh, everlasting ordinance till Jesus came and Jesus changed it. That is very important for us. We are no more bound to that Passover. If anybody is still believing or harking on the Passover, Passover, that person is rejecting the new covenant in Jesus Christ said that. Because you read in Luke, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 6, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, I think, it says, this is a new covenant I set up for you. It says, this is a new covenant I set up for you. Also in Matthew, also in Mark, he talks about it, a new covenant. Why it is essential for a Christian to celebrate Holy Communion? When the Passover is being changed, the Lord said, I will not drink of this till I come back to the kingdom. That means it is Passover finished for us. That we must remember very carefully. Because the devil always wants us to be little the things which Jesus taught us. You, you remember this. The devil's aim is to be little. That's why many people will say, like I was listening to one uh, Jagat Guru or something, a fellow was telling that Jesus is an avatar. He is not God. See, he is avatar. Oh, he is good. He's, everything is good, but he is not God. But Jesus said, if you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. We have to believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He is God Almighty. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He was dead and lives forevermore. If you don't believe it, you're finished. So the devil's aim is to destroy the teachings of Jesus and the person of Jesus. This is what they try to do all the time. And we should not be able to do this. And that is why the Holy Communion was set up. And Jesus said, this is the blood of my new covenant. We are no more bound by the old covenant, which is Passover. We already passed over to the new covenant. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, yes. Amen. 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 And you must understand what was the old telling and what is the new telling. And it's not much of a difference. The Israelites were under bondage. All right, they were under bondage. They were bitter. The bitter herbs is to remind them they were under bitter circumstances. And by killing an unblemished lamb, and applying the blood on the lintel and the side post, if you look at it, you look like a cross. The threshold, they don't put it because you're not supposed to step on the blood of Christ. All right? And anyone who denies the new covenant with Jesus made is stepping on the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what in Hebrew. So, this is the thing, and the blood of Christ is the one that will be, you will find it in all many cultures they have this you go to a chinese new house they'll put a red one correct you go to an indian house you can still find you know the three uh, yellow that made of sandalwood on the lintel and the side and the center one they will have a red mark it signifying that the red is the one that protecting the house. Yeah. So it has been there all the time. Everybody knows about it. And even I read a book where the man says, this is what the Lord has taught from everybody. They, from Adam he taught. But they never believed. And that is why the old cultures, like Chinese culture, Indian culture, which are more than 5,000 years old, they have this red significance. That is why in the... Hindu temples, they will be painted stripes of red alternating with white. You know why? Without the blood, there's no purity. And their eyes are closed. They cannot see the reality. They are blinded. The devil is blinded. That's what the Bible says. It says in Corinthians, the devil has blinded the eyes of the people. Christ has revealed us. So in Passover, it is from bondage to freedom. Bondage of slavery. Restrictions. And you come out of it eating the flesh of a lamb. And New Testament, Jesus Christ said, if actually Jesus Christ, you know many people think Jesus Christ talked about his uh, body and the flesh being the food indeed in, to the Jewish people before he instituted. John's Gospel chapter 6 very clearly says, if you read the whole chapter, they were boasting, oh my father, uh, our ancestors ate man manna in the uh, desert. desert and on the, he said, look, yeah, Moses did not give you, my father from heaven gave you this bread to eat. Alright? But the people who ate the manna died. Same for Caleb and Joshua, none of them entered into the promised land. But the real food that comes from heaven is Jesus himself. Jesus said, I am the bread of the heaven, not manna. I am the See, Jesus took away all this old, the Jewish people still believing it, you know. And they cannot see it. They cannot see it. That's a problem. And they are still believing that manna is the important. Look, Jesus said, I am the bread of heaven. He said, if you eat my flesh, you will live for My flesh is food indeed. My blood is the uh, drink indeed. He said that. Yes, it is. So, what was Jesus telling what? What I am constituting and you are supposed to eat the bread and the wine. On the Passover, he was changing the old covenant to the new covenant. And it is symbolical. You must remember this. There are many churches which consider that the minute the priest blesses it, they become the actual flesh and blood of God. Jesus didn't do that. He told to the uh, Jewish people, all right, on John's Gospel, chapter 6, he said, Eat my flesh. They say, How can we eat your flesh? So it is symbolical. So when we come and take the Holy Communion, it's symbolical. There's a truth behind that. Thing. And that is what we must understand why it is. As Passover was liberty, freedom from slavery, from bondage, the communion is reflecting an important truth. 
It is a liberty from sin. It is a freedom from lust. It's, that's what we read today's episode. Romans is writing, Paul is writing and telling them, look, if you want to take communion, the bread and the wine, which represents the body and the blood, what actually does it mean? Because food and drink, solid food and liquid food, is essential to live. You don't have this, you don't live. And the third one is the air. If you don't have air, you cannot breathe, you'll die. So the air is the Holy Spirit is given. And the bread and the wine, it represents the liquid food and the uh, solid food. And you, without that, you cannot live. So to live a sinless life, a life attaining to be a sinless life, to be part of Christ, you have to uh, eat the food which God gives. And that is his, the flesh and the blood of his son, symbolically. Now, why you must eat? Very interesting. If you go for marriages, I mean, uh, in uh, Indian cultures, they usually don't do it. But I've seen Chinese weddings and uh, uh, European weddings and all that. The thing, they after the marriage, the priest will say, now you may kiss the bride. What is it mouth used for? Food. To eat. Only two things. Either to eat or to speak. So when you kiss, you take the mouth. It means you're eating the other person. <laughs> then you become part of the other person. That's what he symbolifies us. That is why he says, and that is why Paul wrote and said, greet each other with the holy kiss. Don't go around there and kissing everybody. Yeah? Holy kiss. <laughs> Oh, here on the cheek, uh, Reverend Eric corrects me and says, it's not at the mouth, mouth only for the wife and nobody else. So the, I, the, the, the concept is that you become, when you use your mouth, huh, you become part of the other person. That is why the kissing signifies. All right? And uh, the Lord said, I will not do this again till I come into the kingdom. So it's a symbol. So what it symbolizes? The broken body of Christ and that body paid the punishment which we deserve. Which we deserve. Actually we should be punished. But God takes away that punishment on himself and he suffers for us. And the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 9 verse 27 I think, it says that without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin. A soul that sins must die, must shed the blood. And if we cannot shed the blood, even our blood cannot, uh, uh, what do you call, atone the sins because our blood is already tainted. Do you understand? We already have tainted blood. We already committed sin, therefore our blood is tainted. Therefore you must have an untainted blood and that is the one Jesus Christ, the sinless one, and only his blood can be transfused. So these are the two elements which Jesus Christ used. And then he said, and Paul writes and says that if you don't have the spirit of God, Christ, you don't belong to him. So you have a liquid food, you have a solid food, and you have the Holy Spirit, and then you become a new creature in Christ. You see how beautifully Christ has put it together. You, you, you understand? So, in the communion, it's the suffering of Christ. That's why he says, remember, do this in remembrance of me. Because you must remember Jesus suffered. And why he suffered? Because of our sin. Isaiah 53 says very clearly, he was uh, stricken because of our iniquities. And he was beaten up because of our uh, sins. And he paid for our sins and trespasses. So you remember that. That is why he says, do this in remembrance of me. And then you must have life. Blood is life. See, that is why you give blood transfusion to create <coughs> a new strength in a diseased person. So you give a blood transfusion. And therefore, God's blood is 
put into us now. So we become a new creature. That is why you say, Paul said, the world has passed away. And because I have become a new creature, and what are the qualities of the new creature? That is what in, we read in the episode. How a new creature should be given. And how a new creature, how do you identify a new creature? And this is how you do it. That was what read to us this morning in the Romans. So we see that there is a change in our thought process, in our words and our actions. So we change. And the problem is, we always commit sin. And therefore we need to come every time and partake the new life. And that is the body that was broken for us and the blood that was shed for us. We take it symbolically and we strengthen and we go. Now the difference. In fact, Jesus changed a lot of things which we do not know. From Sabbath, I'm sorry to say, the Seventh-day Adventists still believe the self. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, when you come together on the first day of the week, which is the first day of the week? Sunday. So the Christian assembly is on the first day of the week because the Sabbath is the last day of the week and Sunday is the first day of the week. The new week begins. A new life begins. You, you get the point. Christ's new covenant begins on that day. It's completely changed. Are you with me? Can you follow how God brings things? Because in uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, Jesus said, Lo, I make all things new. I make all things, all the old things, I make it new. I make you new. I make your Passover new. I make your Sabbath new. Everything is new. If one is in the day, in Christ, everything becomes new. That is why in our prayers, we say in the newness of life. In the newness of life. You re, you'll be reading it today. Remember this, newness of life. The old has passed away. You, you understand. Somebody asked me the other day, Doctor, why we are not following the festivals of uh, the Jewish people? I said, the world has passed away. Simple as that, the world has passed away. Everything has become new. We have, of course there are certain festivals we still follow like Pentecost. First three comes in the spring. Last three comes in the festival comes in the fall. The one comes in the middle, the wheat harvest, that is Pentecost. We still keep it. And uh, the church follows two calendars. The first calendar is where it's based on the Jewish festivals. So we will have Passover is Easter for us. Pentecost is Pentecost where the Holy Spirit given. And then we don't uh, follow the other things. Because we are waiting for the Lord to, for the trumpet to hear. The trumpet will come. Because the Lord will give the trumpet. We are not uh, looking at the trumpet where the Jewish people are doing it in Sukkot. We are not doing that. We are following, waiting for the trumpet. Look up, he said. Your redemption is near. When you see these things begin to happen, look up. And that's where the trumpet is. That is very important for us. So our mind is tuned to new things, new perspective in Christianity. Of course, we have the Old Testament because the Lord of the Old Testament is also the Lord of the New Testament. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. forever. So we learn from the Old Testament, the history of all the people of the Old Testament, how Abraham was thing, he, how he <coughs> could not stop his desire to have a younger Egyptian woman. He could have told the wife, I don't want, I'm faithful to you, he didn't say that. There are a lot of mistakes we find people, even it happens even today. And God using men not worthy morally weak man, like David. You know, he was a good man, good, but at the same time he had weak points also. God uses. So you must look at it and say, <coughs> okay, so and so has so good, many good points, so many bad points, so many bad points, but if God is using him, respect him, honor him. You understand, there's no perfect person except Jesus Christ on the face of the earth. Only Jesus Christ. 
Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. That's why Jesus said, call no man father. Because your father is supposed to be the epitome of every goodness. But he said, call no man, because every man has weakness. I include women and men. Eh? Every man has weakness, every man has fault, every man has things. But if a person is used by God, we have to honor them. Jehu was not a good man. But God used Jehu to destroy Ahab and Jezebel, the wicked people. There's a lot of difference between that. Not a good man and wicked people. So you must be use our thing. The Old Testament teaches a lot of truths and a lot of examples for us to follow. You all right? At the medical college, we were told that you go from the known to the unknown. The Old Testament is known. And from there, we travel our life to the unknown. You, you get my point? So don't discard Old Testament, as some do. We don't. But we learn from it. But we don't think because of Jewish control Passover, we also must do Passover. That's wrong. For us communion, Jesus has instituted a new covenant and we must obey Jesus Christ at every time, every moment. So you understand the Old Testament concept of Passover and the New Testament. The basic is the same. It is liberty and freedom. For the Jewish people, it is liberty and freedom from bondage and slavery. For Christians, it is liberty and freedom from sin and the sin sick world. Amen. Yes. That's it. Yes. And we follow the New Testament. Because we are no more under bodily, <coughs> under any suppression. We are, we are free. We have the voting rights. We are free to choose our food. We are free to choose our vocation. We are free to do many things. But sin is still gives us anger, envy, lust, and lewdness. All this we read today. And God says, you must get out from here. And for that, you must have a Passover. And that Passover is Holy Communion. You understand? Yes. God bless you, God keep you. And when you come for the communion, come with reverence, come with uh, knowledge that Christ died for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So when you take the bread, you know that symbolically you are eating the broken body of Christ. It was broken because of my sins. It was, so ask for his forgiveness and the blood, a new life, a new life. God is giving you a new life. It's a healing life. All right? A new life must be a, a healing. So if your body is sick, the body is broken, by his stripes you are healed. And the blood is for the forgiveness of sins. So you do this with respect. And Lord, I have received the call you instituted and you told us to do this till I come. And as many times as you remember me, and you will remember Christ for his virgin birth, his sinless life, his atonement death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection, his ascension, his session at the heaven, and we await for his coming. All these things, that's what we sang today. If you have noticed, all the songs I didn't select, he selected. I am not in communion with him. I didn't communicate with him. But it is through the Holy Spirit. If you go back and look at the songs which we sang, it all talks about the new life. Living All right? Living hope. All right? God bless you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, Lord, for teaching us the newness in Christ, the new beginning, the new covenant, the new setup, Lord. We thank you and praise you for everything you did. You did wonderful. As the Julius of his time said, all he did, he did well. You did well, our Lord, and we want to follow your steps. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.